everyone, I'm Lou James, the founder of Pink and Steel International. This presentation focuses on the recovery after cancer treatment. What can you do to boost your recovery so you can live more, tolerate more and do more? My career as a physiotherapist started way back in 1997 and my focus for the past two decades has been on cancer rehabilitation. When I started my career, the words cancer and rehabilitation were not even put together in the same sentence. But things have changed. Now there are healthcare professionals that specialize in oncology rehabilitation, and there is an abundance of research happening around the world looking at the effects of cancer treatment, what works, and what doesn't when it comes to the recovery of cancer treatment. One of the things I've learned through my work is that you can be disease free, but still not free of your disease. Cancer treatments are very effective in removing cancer cells. Your medical team can give you the all clear and people assume once you are done with treatment, life will resume as it was before. However, the reality is there are many lingering challenges that aren't visible which makes resuming any kind of normal difficult. And there are people that live with cancer as a chronic disease. They also face challenges to be able to do the normal things again. However, what makes me so passionate about the cancer rehab work we do at Pink and Steel is that with support, people can improve and progress. Life can get better. Vitality and energy levels can increase. And the good news is, the window for cancer rehab doesn't close. There are people out there dedicated to helping you overcome the challenges left behind by cancer and cancer treatment. It is important to point out that the recovery of cancer is different for each individual. Some people may look like they've sailed through treatment and look completely fine on the outside, yet the impact on their life is huge. So although it is really helpful to share your cancer experiences and learn what has helped others, burning mental cycles and comparing your situation to others is a waste of time and energy. And as Teddy Roosevelt is quoted as saying, comparison is the thief of joy. I found this to be particularly true in the area of cancer treatment and recovery. So when it comes to recovery, there are a lot of variables. Getting the right advice and support tailored for your particular needs is really going to boost your progress. Your health and recovery process is always changing and adapting. So advice you received a few months ago may not be relevant now. There may be many stages or bumps on your road to recovery that you need some help with. This is normal. I think the absolute key is to seek out support and not suffer in silence. If you only take one thing from this presentation, my hope is that you understand there are people out there who are dedicated to supporting the recovery from cancer and it doesn't matter how long ago you were diagnosed. Pink and Steel Cancer Rehab physios and occupational therapists can provide support. So, what are some common challenges on the road to recovery after cancer treatment? Well, I have a quick quiz for you. I want you to guess what the most common medical issue is for people after cancer treatment. Is it pain? Is it depression or anxiety? Is it peripheral neuropathy, so tingling or numbness in your hands and feet? Or is it fatigue? It turns out the biggest complaint is fatigue, tiredness, exhaustion. It is important for you and other people in your life to know that cancer-related fatigue is different from the fatigue people feel when they are otherwise well. Normal fatigue in the non-cancer population can usually be relieved by rest and sleep, after which you feel back to normal again. Cancer-related fatigue is very different. It tends to last longer. It is not relieved by rest and a good night's sleep. 
And as one of my patients said to me, my mind is willing, but my body doesn't let me do what I want to do. This can be super frustrating. It is very difficult to generalize because there are so many different types and stages of cancer. There are different types of treatment and different levels of fatigue. So there is no one size fits all strategy here. Having said that, I think there is massive opportunity to make progress on an invasive symptom that can affect every aspect of our lives. Fatigue, like pain, is a self-perceived state. Patients often describe it as a sensation of exhaustion during or after usual activities or even a feeling of inadequate energy to actually begin these activities. With cancer, people often refer to a new type of fatigue, which is a whole body experience. This is why it is so important that we pay attention to fatigue. Our energy level permeates so many different aspects of our lives. Our mood, our work performance, how we socialize, a sense of self-confidence. So to put a positive spin on this, I think taking care of your fatigue can actually treat many other important aspects of your life. So if we treat fatigue and help people manage their fatigue better, we can help improve all of these things. Research shows that approximately 90% of people affected by cancer experience fatigue. It is very difficult to point to one mechanism. There are so many things going on. The treatments can be toxic. Your body is repairing itself. Altered nutrition and sleep cycles, medications, stress, and your emotional state can have a major influence on the severity of fatigue. One reason that fatigue is undertreated and people often suffer in silence is that there is no high tech test. You can't just get a scan and find out you have fatigue. A good way to describe your fatigue to the people you care about is to give yourself a score on a scale of 0 to 10, where 0 means you don't feel tired at all, and 10 means the worst tiredness you can imagine. If you are scoring above 4, you should discuss this with the people around you. If you are scoring above 7, you need to see a doctor or cancer rehab clinician to investigate the cause and help with a management plan. Another reason for undertreatment of fatigue is people don't bring up their fatigue with their medical teams. Most people believe that nothing can be done. With that in mind, the question is, what is the most effective treatment? How can you boost your energy and reduce your fatigue levels? Well, you may need to treat your anemia or your thyroid or the side effects from medications first, but here are three key strategies to focus on. Number one is to visualize your energy bank account. Many of you will find your energy account is less after a cancer diagnosis. So you need to look at the things in your life that draw on that account. When you're suffering from fatigue, you need to prioritize the things that really matter to you. Your energy levels are limited and precious. So if you use the analogy of the bank account, which explains energy as a finite bank balance, which you have to budget and spend wisely. So you wake up in the morning with a hundred dollars worth of energy and you assign different dollar amounts to different tasks as well as different energy conserving strategies as savings, which you could spend on other activities. On the slide here is an example of a list of things that can sap energy, so withdrawals, and a list of things that replenish energy, deposits. So in a nutshell, it is important to have a bit of a deep dive into what things in your day drain you and what energizes you. Doing a fatigue diary may help, and if you can't work this out on your own, a cancer rehab physio or occupational therapist can help. To keep the energy account in positive balance, we often talk about the three Ps. 
planning, prioritizing, and pacing. So the three P's is the number two strategy. Priority setting is crucial. So designing your days and weeks around your priorities. Pacing is key too, especially for people that are used to being able to go at a high rate all the time, or for people that have a push through attitude. It can be tempting to do too much on a good day in order to make the most of your energy. However, this can often leave you with nothing in reserve over the following days. This is known as a boom or bust cycle. So for example, you wake up feeling good, you see the lawn needs mowing, so you go out and you mow the entire lawn, then feel completely shattered the next day. So pacing is about scheduling times to rest and resting before you become fatigued. Instead of doing the whole lawn in one hit, you might do half the lawn, stop, have lunch and a short rest before tackling the second half of the lawns. So frequent short rests are beneficial. This does make a difference. Pacing is carrying out activities one bit at a time and not tackling all of them at once. So to recap, number one, visualize your energy bank account. Number two, remember the three P's, planning, prioritizing, and pacing. The next key strategy is exercise. Research shows the number one treatment for fatigue is exercise, avoiding inactivity. So this is of course counterintuitive. When people ask, won't exercise make me more tired? Well, the answer is no. The key is that you need to work out what is the amount of exercise that energizes you and what is too much and tires you. So you may not be able to start at the same level, intensity, or duration of exercise that you used to do before your cancer diagnosis. But there is significant evidence to show that a low to moderate intensity exercise program can substantially reduce cancer-related fatigue and improve your quality of life. Even if you start with 20 minutes a day, you can take your pick, whether it's walking, Pilates, yoga, cycling, Zumba, paddleboarding, whatever works for you. There is no one miracle exercise. Just do something that you enjoy. It is often very difficult getting started, so I recommend seeing a pink and steel cancer rehab physio initially to help you. Or if you have tried exercise and are still suffering from fatigue, don't give up. Just get some support to ensure you start on the right dose and intensity to boost you, not wear you out. A cancer rehab physio will take the guesswork out of choosing what type of exercise is the most effective for you and how to progress to gain more energy and stamina. They can give you an exercise program that you can do at home, or they can tailor something that you can do at a gym or with others in a pink and steel cancer exercise class. Remember the key strategy is avoiding inactivity. Doing nothing won't help you help you gain more energy. So keep moving, keep improving. So let's take a closer look at exercise now because as I mentioned, it is a key strategy to help combat fatigue, but it does also have many other benefits. We all know that being active is good for our health, but when it comes to cancer, exercise could well be one of the most powerful tools in your armor. Experts in exercise oncology are calling for physical activity to be seen as the fourth treatment option for cancer and for it to be included as a standard in the care package for anyone with the disease. And there is a growing body of scientific research to back up this bold claim. Exercise has been observed to have a protective effect against cancer recurrence, cancer mortality, and all cause mortality. These figures are significant. Exercising regularly can reduce your chance of having a cancer recurrence 
in some cases as high as 35%. And it may improve your survival from cancer anywhere between 28 or 44%. These are significant stats. And if exercise were a pill or a tablet, it would be the most widely prescribed medication in the world. And this is shown in multiple research studies. In the past decade alone, there have been over 900 randomized controlled exercise trials that have shown a clear benefit from exercise. Have a look at this slide. Being active can help you overcome many of the debilitating side effects from surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. It can improve your muscle mass, strength, and power. It can improve cardiovascular fitness, physical functioning, range of motion and flexibility. It can help your immune function, body image, self-esteem, mood, and energy levels. And it can help you sleep better. It has also been shown to reduce symptoms and side effects including pain, fatigue and nausea, and reduce the intensity of symptoms, reduce duration of hospital stays, and reduce depression and anxiety. And above all, being active just makes us feel better. Getting back into exercise is one of the most difficult things to regularly do after a cancer diagnosis. To be fair, the vast majority of the population aren't active enough for good health. So it's no wonder getting started and staying active is hard after your body has had to deal with cancer treatment. A quick Google search for the word exercise brings up images of muscular bodies and tight lycra and people running or lifting heavy weights at the gym. There are messages about no excuses, no pain, no gain, and not quitting. Most are doing exercises designed to tone an area of their body or to lose weight. And the message is, unless we are smashing it in the gym, it is not worth doing. And it all feels intimidating and hard. There is very little about the health and mental well-being benefit and none of it feels nurturing, nourishing and gentle. I think these messages can be really damaging and not helpful when we think about exercise in the context of cancer. Instead, think about the health benefits of being active, on having stronger muscles with more endurance to help us walk, run, lift things and do activities we love. We need to think of movement as a bit like another type of medication or nourishing food. It needs to become part of life, a habit as ingrained as brushing our teeth. Exercise should make you feel good both during and afterwards. So if it doesn't, I really encourage you to get some support from a cancer rehab physio. There are a million ways to be active and getting help so it becomes more achievable, enjoyable and doable is so important for recovery and long-term health. If you have any physical concerns that you are worried will flare up with exercise, then book an appointment with a pink and steel practitioner in your region. They can do a physical and functional assessment and give you a tailored rehab plan specifically for you. It really upsets me when I hear from people who are struggling unnecessarily after cancer treatment with things like weakness, balance problems, pain, swelling, breathing problems, mobility issues, stiffness, aches, etc, etc. Because they didn't know who to turn to. You are never too old, too weak, too slow, too deconditioned to start. So to summarize, when it comes to recovering from cancer, there are a lot of variables. You are unique and your road to recovery is unique to you. Getting the right advice and support tailored for your particular needs is key to boosting your progress, gaining more energy and looking after your long-term health. 
no one expects an elite athlete to get back to the supporting arena without tailored rehab support. So even though many of your symptoms or concerns after cancer may not be visible to others, you should absolutely have support. Cancer rehabilitation is not focused on the disease. It is focused on people and helping them get back to living again. To find support near you, visit our website, pinkandsteel.com. Take care and all the best.